So it's time in this video for a highly educational etymology lesson. Yesterday, I got a comment on one of my videos, which was probably a joke, but it's a joke that I can give a very serious response to. And the joke is, or the comment was, how do you say cuck in Proto-Indo-European? Probably just someone messing around, but you posted that on the right channel if you wanted to get an answer about that. So, how do you say cuck in Indo-European? Let's say you want to own someone thousands of years ago in a language that's not spoken anymore. How do you do that? Let's find out. So, of course, cuck in English, short for cuckold, uh, comes from the cuckoo bird, which lays its eggs in other birds' nests. That's not a very interesting etymology. It, I think it actually comes from the, the sound that the bird makes. It's onomatopoeia. But let's look at the word cuck in other languages, other Indo-European languages, and see if we can't reconstruct something. So, in Spanish, the word for cuck or cuckold is cornudo, okay? Um, now that means literally someone who is horned, like cornudo also means something like, you know, something that has horns, right? Um, now in other Romance languages as well, uh, for example, Italian, you say cornuto, that's a cuck. Um, same, same etymology, it means something with horns. Now there's debate as to where, why this actually comes. You know, maybe, I don't know, it's something phallic or, or something. Uh, I don't think any people just have folk etymologies as for why. But the word in Romance languages that means horned usually means a cuck. Uh, and it's the same thing in Latin as well. Cornutus in Latin means a cuck. And that means, literally it means someone with horns, but it also means cuck. That's basically what it, what it uh, amounts to. And I'm trying to think, so we do have some, so cornu in Latin means horn. Uh, we have some English words that actually come from this, so like cornucopia. Uh, cornu means horn, and copia means plenty. So a cornucopia is a horn of a horn of plenty. Um, but where things get interesting, if we want to reconstruct some into a European word, is that if you look at earlier English, you see that English actually used the same kind of metaphor. So um, you know, in Middle English or so, you know, several hundred years ago, if you described someone as horned or horned, that actually meant basically the same thing. It meant that they were a cuck. So, there are two possibilities here. Well, three possibilities. One is it could just be a coincidence. Another one is that English speakers heard this metaphor used in Romance languages and borrowed it. Another one is that both of them go back to the same Indo-European source. And I think this actually might be a stronger alternative here, because the word horn, if you don't know already, horn is actually related to the Latin word cornu, etymologically. They sound very different if you have an untrained ear, but um, in Indo-European, of course, Germanic languages go through, you know, the uh, Grimm and, and Werner's law, where they, a bunch of uh, sounds change systematically. So a sound, the K sound in most other Indo-European languages shows up as a H sound in Germanic languages. So there are other words like this as well, so like, you know, cornu in Latin versus horn in English, or like, uh, let's say, like uh, kratus, kratus in um, Greek, that means like strong, that's equivalent to the English word hard. Or even something like um, uh, the Latin word carus, which means beloved or dear or sometimes expensive. That's actually related to our English word whore, which took on different connotations, but it used to mean someone beloved or something like that, uh, or loved or something. So ka actually corresponds to ha in English. And of course, if you know Grimm and Werner's Law, there are a bunch of other sounds, but this is the one that matters for us. So horn is actually the same word etymologically as cornu in Latin. And thus horned etymologically is basically the same word. It's not like English speakers borrowed it onto just a similar, like uh, a word in similar meaning. They happen to borrow it onto the, if they borrowed it from Latin languages, they would coincidentally borrow it to the word that etymologically was the same. And this might be good proof that calling someone a cuck actually etymologically goes back further than English and, Ger and Latin back to where they had a common ancestor in Proto-Indo-European. Contrary to popular belief, it's not like European languages in Indo-European are more closely related than they are to other languages. Uh, you know, Germanic and I Italic slash Romance, they basically have to go back to the source if you want to find how similar they are. So, what's next? So, the other interesting thing, let's say we actually want to figure out which Indo-European word, uh, what it would sound like in Indo-European. Now, if you look at words for horn in other languages, so, for example, in um, Hittite, the word for horn is sorno. I think so sorno, sorna, something like that. And that actually is related as well to cornu and horn. 
Um, and I think in Sanskrit, there's a word, I don't know Sanskrit that well, but there's something like uh, shranga. Shranga starts with the SH kind of sound. Now, you might be asking why does an SH sound or surna in, in Hittite, how is that related to the ka sound in Latin? Well, that's because all of them come, uh, whenever you see that in an Indo-European language, that actually corresponds to the Indo-European palatal K, um, which sounded some, it's not exactly like a K sound, it's more like ch, it's a little bit different. Um, but in Western, well, that's actually the wrong term to use, but in some Indo-European languages like Latin and English, that sound actually merges with the normal K. So it comes to Latin as corno, it comes to Latin, or it comes to English as horn, because, you know, both become K and then K changes to H. Whereas in other Indo-European languages like Sanskrit and like Hittite, that actually, the palatal K, the K sound becomes something more like sh. And you can sort of see how those are related, uh, or Hittite, it's it's sa uh, or whatever. Um, so what this tells us is that the Indo-European word for cuck had to have had a palatal velar. In fact, the specific root it would have come from is ker, which can mean different things. Sometimes, you know, it's associated with horns, but it's also associated with just like the top of your head or something like that. So one derivative of this, of ker, is in Latin there's the word cerebrum, which is brain. We obviously get the word cerebrum from it. Um, so this too is related actually to the same source. So ker gives us all of those things. Um, now this is where things get a little fuzzy for me. Now of course I can give you a good word for it, but um, I haven't done Indo-European in a couple years, so uh, I might get some details wrong. So here's the important thing. Now first off we have an in, and ins pop up in many different places in Indo-European. It's not too weird to have, you know, um, a root from ker, like kerno or something like that. So that, that isn't too uh, surprising. Um, but uh, it also, so the Latin ending, cornutus, that sort of tells you that it comes from, the tus comes from a, uh, a adjectival ending, or sort of a nominalizing ending in Indo-European that's tos. And that's what's, it's specifically what's called a hit, uh, hetero, wait, hysterokinetic, and I think that's it, hysterokinetic um, uh, suffix, because when you put it on a word, the stress actually shifts to the suffix. And sometimes you'll have vowel changes or ablaud or something like that. Uh, you can, if you can get it wrong, you can correct me if I get something a, a little wrong here. But um, the so anyway, what the Indo-European word for a cuck should be, literally someone who is horned, uh, should be like uh, let's see, knotos or something like that. Knotos, uh, and it depends on wh what exact word you want to have it come from, you could just say instead of having a, uh, a a syllabic R, it has an O, because that's what you see in Latin, uh, cornotos, um, cornotos, I should be clear, you have stress at the end. So that should basically be your Indo-European word for cuck. Um, again, it, it, now this is definitely the Indo-European word for horned or something like that, barring any mistakes that I make made as I'm etymologizing my car here today. Uh, but that should be the Indo-European word for horned, horned. But uh, it might be the case that, like in Germanic and Romance languages, that has the connotation of being a cuck as well. So that is, that is basically how you say cuck in Proto-Indo-European. And I will put the, I'll, maybe I'll put the uh, declension for it in the video description or, or in, a, in the comments section, in case any of you guys want to decline the word in all appropriate cases. Um, so anyway... That's about it, and I will see you guys next time.